this is cannot be God talking and you agreed already yeah but even if it's an error but the Quran also has many coincidences that it gets difficult to decide if it's if is if Islam is wrong or true okay but 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 you just agreed that this is an error right from uh, the semen coming from between the back yeah, one okay so how Allah he is God and he, he make errors yeah but at the same time how God uh, how Allah can make errors but at the same time how Allah can make uh, miracles because he did not. Also, where is the miracle of Allah? Allah? Where, okay, show me the miracle of Allah. Go ahead. Allah also explains where milk comes from the cow. How? Where? Says, where? Where? Where is uh, the? Where is the verse explaining how the milk comes from the cow? Oh, I'll share it. Right. Hmm. What chapter? What verse? Chapter 16, verse uh, 66. Chapter what? 66? No, uh, chapter 16, verse 66. Chapter 16, verse number 66. Here we go. All right, let us laugh together. Do you promise me you will laugh with me if it's funny? Sorry? Do you promise me you will laugh with me if what you just said is funny? Where is where is the explanation how the milk is made? No, oh, it's uh, actually explaining how hmm. how the milk comes from the from the belly to the penis. It says it comes between the the milk comes from the belly to the penis. No, yeah, yeah, from that. What penis? So you you believe that milk come to the penis? How else do they make milk? Penis. Uh, they have several penises. I don't know. Ah, that's penises. That, that is nipples, as I know. <laughs> okay, look, look what it says with me here. Uh, we give you to drink of that which is in their billies. Now, is the milk in their billies? Yes. Really? How come? You can, you can ask any scientist. Mm, okay. Let us see if we go right now and search. Okay. From B twixt the refuse and the blood, we extract pure milk. This is the interpretation. Do you agree with that? I right. okay, okay. Let us go and see what is that is about. If we change, by the way, the I will show you the other interpretation so we can see all the Muslims' explanation. Uh, okay, cattle. Listen, we give you the drink. Introduced an example of listen that which is in the belly of the cattle. Bit is from mine indicate a new subject and similarity connection uh, okay we give you a drink from between the refuse of essential waste and the blood the pure milk okay i'm going to go right now and i will Again, search go. hold on let me search in google i will search in google and we will see how milk is generated how milk in goat or cow you can okay. even go on the youtube and see just type in youtube how cows uh, how cows make milk and they'll show you there's a video about it okay we will see we cannot play videos of somebody else yeah okay let us see and I'm, I'm looking i'm trying to find a website but here i don't see Okay. Mm, here it doesn't show us really too much details. I'll see the front website. Education University. Let us see. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Advertising. 
Okay. It, uh, All right. It, hold on. Let us see. But it doesn't show anything. Next. Okay. Let us see. This is like uh, <clears throat> how dairy cow make milks is really cool. Okay. So dairy cows have four stomachs. Each plays as different part of digesting what cow eat. All right. The first stomach is called rumen. The second stomach is called reticulum. The third stomach is called omsum. The fourth stomach is called abosum. Dairy cows swallow their food half chewed. And then the food travel to the first stomach of the Roman, uh, okay, where mixed with water. It's moved to the second stomach. In the second stomach, the rectum, the food passed to the small balls of called cod. Each cod is, let me be sure that's you guys, you can see everything. Hold on. It's my fault, you cannot see everything. Let me zoom out. Let us turn this thing off. All right, that's better. All right. Okay. So uh, each could uh, return to the mouth to be chewed again. All right. The food then moved to the third stomach. With each cud uh, squashed to remove water, then move to the fourth stomach. In the fourth stomach, the abonsmum, the food is digested. And, and it then move into small in, intestine. Yeah. The yeah. instant take, okay, no train yeah. from the food and send it to the bloodstream. Okay, some of this blood full of natural uh, nutrients move to under, etc. Okay, change natural milk store and they the chew milk. All right. Most dairy cow produce 25 liter, okay? Yeah. Anyway, if we go back to the verse, my friend, the verse in the front of me. وَلَكُمْ يَا الْعَامِ لِعِبْرَى نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهَا مِنْ بَيْنِ فُرْثٍ وَدَمٍ وَلَبَنًا خَالِصًا سَائِغًا You see, when the Muslim, they translate, they try to, to, uh, 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 to make things uh, fit with their own idea. If you read in the verse in Arabic, it says, نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهِ مِنْ بَيْنِ فَرْثٍ وَدَمٍ لَبَنًا خَالِصًا سَائِغًا What is the firth? Do you know what firth mean? No. Okay, let us go to firth. Let me show you. I will go to the dictionary. Actually, you know what? Let us do this go to the arabic one because always the arabic one is different from the english but let us go here first in the dictionary okay first uh it says the balls do you see it yeah karimat al quran okay balls is that what it says in the scientist uh, teaching? No. Okay. <clears throat> so what we will do now with the balls? Uh, where does it say balls? It's it's, it's in front of you. The, you see it here. Yeah. Here actually, uh, it says. Uh, if we take the same word, let me show you, my friend. You see, this is your uh, this is your Islamic dictionary, and you see here it says next to it. Farthin Karimatul Quran. This is the word as it's mentioned in the Quran. Okay, this is how it's mentioned in the Quran. And then uh, there's other meaning: the pra uh, the particles of food in a, in a stain. Uh, farthin. Let us see which one is the one is mentioned. Farth is Hissul Alam. Okay, Farth in Arabic mean al ghait mean the piss. Let us make it simple. If we go in the Quran and we search for the same word, okay.
You see, this is the word Firth, and the word yeah. Firth is always the piss from their piss. The Muslims in their translation that word totally disappear. If we go to the Arabic dictionary, I will post the word Firth here as it is, and we go to the dictionary. And this is the same chat that we are reading from. <clears throat> so it says according. Okay, read so with me. Read with me, Frank. Read, no, read, read, read with me. Read with me. Uh, uh, first, this is the same verse we are reading. Arroth al mawjud fil Quran. Do you know what arroth mean? No. The shit. What? The shit. Arroth. Arroth. What is? This is chapter. Here we go. They are even quoting for you the Quran. Ma fil kurush min al thufl. What is inside the belly? What is that? Here it says. Arrothu al mawjud fil kurth fil kurush. Arroth is shit. So your Quran saying, you see, in the translation when we read, it's really confusing. But your Quran saying it clearly that what is coming from the shit, uh, your God claim that from the shit of the cow, because this is a roth, this is not even a food. From the shit of the cow, Allah will give you the milk. But read with me carefully. First, a nahl, a sarjain, a zibul, wa madama fil kurush yusamma. Al Furtha. This is your Islamic dictionary, not mine. I'm not saying anything. So how? So according to the dictionary, it says we give you drink. Let me, from let me give you a link, my friend. So you will not say I'm making things up. Here we go. This is your Islamic dictionary. I will send it to you. You can check it out in your time. All right, and you can check the words. Here we go. You can open it in your side. I can take right now. We can go to Google Translation, copy this, and go to Google Translation. Doesn't it mean bowels or something like that? Well, it's, uh, this is what the ref mean. It's uh, it's the it's the shit. No, now you see, we are just going even in, in dictionary is showing you that this is the verse where the word is mentioned. Okay, we go to Google Translation. I'm going to paste the word in Arabic as it is, and I'm going to switch to English. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. So what, what the Muslims, they try to say in their interpretation uh, as English is totally different from what it says really in the Quran. Because the Quran is saying, and, and you know, we watch the video together where it says how the food goes, but nowhere it says that this has became shit. Right? Yeah. Okay, but the Quran is saying it's coming from the shit. And again, I give you the link. Here we go. All right. Read with me carefully. Yeah. Min Baini Farthi and Nahil. This is a chapter and Nahil, verse number 66. Do you see it? Yeah. So there's no mistake that he is trying to explain something else. And this is Arroth al Mawjudu fil Karsh. The shit which is in the kirsh. We took it to Google Translation. It coming as the dunk which is in the belly. Yeah. So what the verse is saying that we extract from the uh, uh, from the belly, uh, from the shit which is in the belly, and from the blood a milk for you. But this is really absolutely false. Let us go to Arabic. Oh. Let us see some Arabic interpretation. Maybe. Doesn't, it say, uh, doesn't it say that it comes between the like between the dung and the blood? yeah yeah like, but you know but uh, but it says shit i mean how the roth how how yeah. how the how, how that will be uh let us yeah. read together here this is the, the uh, al qurtubi in arabic let us see if al qurtubi can give us something you know what let us go and see uh Ibn Kathir in english even though I, I, uh, an Ibn Kathir in English always they lie in their in their interpretation, but let us see. Let us so people they can read with me. This is uh, an Nahl sixteen verse sixty six. Okay, let us see what it says. And this is in English, so people they can read with me. <clears> 
All right. Uh, okay, provide a drink from their belly. Okay, let us see. Meaning it's free of a blood and pure. You see, it's free of blood. It's not even saying extract from blood. Yeah, it says it's free it? from blood. Okay, hold on, let us see. And it's pure in witnesses, taste and sweetness. Have nothing to do how it's really. And then it says, you see in the, in the, in the uh, uh, in that Muslim translation, they say we extract, correct? Yeah. Okay. What is the word extract? Do you see the so, word extract? It says ma bayna farthin wa damin Lebanon khalisan. Nowhere, so no, nowhere it says extract. And let us continue. And this is a nikah so, as you see. Okay. So it's not uh, describing the progress of the milk. Read with me carefully, my friend. But each of them goes its own way after the food has been fully digested in the stomach. The blood goes to the vein. This is Ibn Kathir, who has came long after Muhammad, trying to explain with, you know, this is when science became so advanced. The milk goes to the end of the urine, uh, 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 goes to the bladder, and uh, uh, feces goes to the anus. None of them get mixed together. This has nothing to do with extracting from shit or etc. What, what the God of Islam is saying to you, here we go, the, 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 the cow eat, and you get milk, and the milk is not mixed with their blood, either with their sh shit. That's all. Read it in front of you. Right? Yeah. Okay, same uh, by the way, as long as we are talking about here in the same verse in the Quran, the same chapter we are reading from, it says, if you go, if you go, uh, you will find the following. And I will go to Ibn Kathir in the same time. Uh, the Quran says the same thing about the honey. The honey in chapter 66. It's chapter 16, sorry. Verse number 69. The same chapter, if we go a few verses after, you will see that the God of Islam says that there is the, the, the honey of the bees is shit. It's literally the shit. Let me, let me show you. Uh, let us go to Ibn Kathir. 16. We go up. But the honey spook there. Uh, the uh, the nectar that they, that they suck is they're gonna uh, they are they are going to puke that out right no my friend you see the the Quran says let me show you the verse in the Quran it says that the the uh, the bees they eat from the fruit and they shit milk they shit the honey read with me carefully this is chapter sixteen verse number sixty nine yeah okay we go down Maybe. let us let us show the other website because that will be more clear okay let us see maybe allah meant that uh, they eat from the fruits means that yeah but the, no that. no no it says no it says that they eat from the fruit and honey come from their belly they eat from the fruit and honey come from their belly and this is stupid the because you are saying to me they eat already they eat but they don't eat the fruits the honey is their food so the god of islam he think that that uh, the the what what the what the bees do, they go and eat from the fruit. So when we see them going around in the flowers and the roses, what they are doing exactly? They are eating the flowers, and then their shit is honey. That's wonderful. I wish my shit is the same. Excuse my language. You know, <laughs> I wish that will can happen to me, so I can say it out. So here, if we go, okay. Uh, Chapter Maybe. 16, verse number 69. Read with me carefully, my friend. Which translation is your favorite? Uh, you can just speak. All right. Then they eat of all pro pro produce of the earth. In Arabic, it says uh, uh, fruit, not produce. But anyway. And find with the skills of speech, spe uh, species, baths of the Lord. They are issued from within their body a drink, a very, uh, a very color, wherein is healing for man so what they eat they eat from the the, the fruit and they do dump the honey and this is absolutely false the honey is their food it's not something else 
Yeah, but uh, can't it mean that Allah is trying to explain here that the honey, the bees sees the uh, the flowers as fruits? No, my friend. The the you see, the Quran even says like, fruits, not only flowers, because bees they go to anything is sweet, even if it's fruit, not necessarily really. Uh, uh, not, not necessarily uh, uh, roses or flowers bees if they see something sweet they suck it too they suck then what it's called the juice of it and they take it to the hive and it's not even the one who go and collect is the one who make it honey what the Quran saying <clears throat> do you see the word eat my friend I'm not making things up do you see it says eat of all yeah. fruits okay but they don't eat from the fruit and then a drink will come from her belly so what the Quran is teaching that those bees they make honey not not really for their food it's their shit they eat they ate the fruit and they shit honey if we go right now to any interpretation which one you like you want me to go to make the same the same in Mikathir or different one we can go here we go choose one uh, it's up to you uh, you know it doesn't matter really Ch uh, chapter 16 verse number 69 let us see Chapter 16, we go to English. <clears throat> Verse number 69, we go to Ibn Abbas first, the cousin of your prophet. Okay, read with me carefully. Then eat of all the fruits, explanation, from all type of fruits, and follow ways the Lord made smooth for thee made a truck table for you there comes from their belly from their belly of the bees a drink various of uh, uh, hues uh, red yellow white this is the color of the honey healing for mankind and illness okay um, it's very simple eat from the fruit and the honey is a miracle from Allah for us so Allah he made the eat bees eat fruit and shed honey that's not right. That's absolutely okay. false. Right? Doesn't the honey emerge in the stomach of the bee? My friend, yes. first of all, for uh, you see the this is not a the, the the bee is the one who make the the honey. Uh, they have they call them they call them stomach, but they are not stomach because they don't eat the honey there. You see, like the the bee who go and collect the nectar, bring it back in her tongue is not even in her belly. Then. She give it to other bees, and then they vibrate over it, and they they have their own method to to make that nectar into honey, and they don't they don't eat it right away, they spit it out from their mouth, and then that is the honey which is collected. We collect from them. They save it for later to eat it. This is their food. What the Quran is saying that the honey is eaten from the fruit, and it's coming from their belly, which means they shit it. The same as what he said about the bakhara, the cow or the cattle, that you know the, the milk is not mixing, like it's a miracle how the how they eat grass and the grass became shit and they have a blood in their body, but the milk is not mixing with them. So the Quran is not explaining how the milk became milk. The Quran is saying is not mixed, it's a miracle. The same as the Quran says, you remember the Muslim they say to us that the two uh, uh uh, the two uh, uh, the two seas they don't mix the fresh and the salty. Do you remember that one? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, that okay. is correct, right? Yeah, but this is false. No. Why? why? Okay, let us see why. Because <laughs> simply, what the Quran is saying, and this is in chapter twenty-five, verse number fifty-three, and chapter five, uh, uh, verse number nineteen, that. Uh, Allah he made a barrier between the fresh water and the salty <laughs> water so they will never ever mix they, they, yeah. he forbid them from meeting together do you see it? it says forbid them forbidden ban between them do you see it yeah so the Muslims in order to make a miracle they fabricate the story and they, they forget it says here forbidden they say this is about the fresh water and salty water in the sea because why it says that there is Two seas, but all of us we know that fresh water is not a sea. That is a mistake. The reason for that mistake, Muhammad he is 
saying here that there's two seas one sea is the fresh water and one sea is the salty water do you agree with that term that there's two seas uh, yeah there is where where is the sea of the fresh water uh he's just saying that there is a salty uh, sea and the fresh sea okay where is the fresh sea no, you see when we say sea we have to have a huge amount of water equal to a sea that we call it a sea, yeah. correct? Okay, but we didn't have such a thing. But what Muhammad he is teaching here, that because the Arab, whatever they dig, like I say, you can dig in the ground and you find the water, right? Like not everywhere, but mostly you can find, right? Uh, so Muhammad he believed that it's a miracle that Allah he forbid the salty water from the fresh uh, fresh water from mixing together. So we have two seas, we have two containers. And they are yeah. forbidden totally from meeting. How he forbid them? If we go to the interpretation, let me show you, my friend. Again, this is a chapter 25, verse number 53. We go to Ibn Kathir as long as it's open. All right. All right this website is not working. Okay. 25. And then verse number 53. We'll read it from 51 and after all right let us see what it says here and this is by the way ibn kathir is a big fat liar trying to defend the quran but still i use him to get things busted uh, because ibn kathir came long long after muhammad because now he became more people became more educated and they noticed how stupid the quran is so he tried to explain so here we go and he is has uh, he has let free the two seas this is relatable and sweet and that is salty and bitter means he created two kind of water sweet and salty the salt is sweet and uh, water is like in the river spring and wells which is a fresh sweet platable water this was the view of ibn juraj etc etc okay and we continue uh, and that is salty water meaning that salty water is not easy to swallow blah 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 okay now he says here, and that can be found in the Red Sea, in the Arabian Sea, in the Persian Gulf, in China Sea, blah, blah, blah. All right. And then he says, and he made between them a barrier. Do you see the, the, the screen, my friend? Yeah. Okay. Yes, a barrier and complete partition. Complete. Complete. That's it. They don't mix. Never. Between them. Meaning between the sweet water and the salt water barrier mean a partition which is a dry land do you see it yeah okay in the muslim videos and the, the claim what they say they say this is about the two meat two 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 water they meet together but they don't mix correct uh, isn't uh uh this barzakh mean land Barzakh mean land, yes, but the Muslim they lie. Why they lie? I, I want to ask you, my friend. Why they lie and they say this is a miracle? The Quran is speaking about salty water, and 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 they show you a video of a river in the ocean and see a, 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 a masha Allah. The Quran miracle speak about the same thing. I mean, this is have nothing to do with this. All what the Quran is saying, stupid thing, that the salty water and the fresh water they never mix because Allah He put a barrier between it. But but this is a mistake because you know and I know. That the, the the fresh water we have is coming from the ocean. The ocean water, the ocean water vibrate because of the heat, became a cloud. The cloud moved to the top of the land. We have rain, and then we have a fresh water. Correct? Yeah. But the Quran saying the opposite. The Quran says those two water never mix. There is partition between them, and what is the partition? A land. Yeah, but doesn't uh, this barzakh also mean something else? Barzakh is a piece of land, my friend, which is separating between two two places, two things. This is what so Barzakh. Mean, so not only that, my friend, not only that. It says, you see, it says, Do you know what Hajar means? Hajar means a rock. Okay? Hajar is a rock. Hajaran is, is a rocky, uh, uh, you know, pre uh, a preventer, barrier. So this is why it says, and complete partition, complete partition. Which means they will never ever mix. They are forbidden from mixing. So in chapter twenty-three, verse hundred, it's talking about a piece of land. 
Yes, and not only that, look what he continues saying. He is even mm -hmm. quoting for you, mm -hmm. he's quoting for you from different verses in the Quran. He says, He has let loose the two seas meeting to um, meeting together between them as a barrier which none can transgress. Do you see yeah, it? But, yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, Surah, uh, Surah 23, verse 100 is actually it still mentions uh Bansakh, but it's actually not mentioning uh mentioning the land what what uh, what what the chapter uh 23 verse 100 the verse 100 maybe. verse 100 yeah. okay let's go to yeah. verse 100 hold on maybe Bansakh doesn't <clears throat> always have what? i don't know what verse land. 100 is let me see are you sure the verse 100 verse 100 verse 100 there's no 100 i'm talking about 23 not 25 oh, okay 23 all right yeah Right, okay. This is, we go here. We read from verse number 99 and 200. All right. Okay. Maybe this shows... Uh, yeah, but this is, uh, okay. Yeah, we see uh, uh, behind him, you see, here we go. Is a barrier between the world and the hereafter. Barrier between the world and hereafter, and Barzakh simply it, is uh, a piece of land. This is the, the, here we go. It's in front of you. It's a barrier. Still, so, it's the same. So it says that uh, uh, there is a piece of land between them until they are resurrected. Yeah. But no, it's, it says here that he did not give more details because already he explained what what Barzakh is. You know, but we can go to the dictionary. But he is saying still there's a barrier. And this is different. This is a different chapter. You know, the Muslim scholar who said that the word barzakh mean a piece of land about the verse we are debating about, for sure he knew what he's talking about, right? He will not say it's a piece of land if it's not, right? Yeah. We can go right now to the dictionary and we can type the word barzakh. Let us do it right now. You know, here we go. The word barzakh. Let us go English, uh, Arabic, barzakh. Look what it says. I don't know if you can see with me what I see. Yeah, I okay. uh, I think okay. as well. Let us see Barzakh. Oh, it, it does not actually it did not type the whole word. Let me do it again. Barzakh. It says uh, no, it's not. It's not yet. It's not. It's not there. It's not there yet. Okay. All right. Barzakh. Here they will show you the one is appear in the Quran. Let us see where it says the one in the Quran. Here we go. Here it says Barzakh barrier. All right, barrier. But it doesn't yeah. show. Let us go to the Arabic one. Arabic, 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 Arabic will be better. Let us do that. Where is where, where is the search engine? There is no search engine here. Let us do that. Uh, Barzakh. Okay, Barzakh. It is dictionary. Uh, Let us type the word man. All right. Let us switch here. Look like we are having difficulty. Let us switch to Arabic, 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 Arabic. Here we go. That's better. Barzakh. All right. Here they are saying to you, Barzakh, it can be a barrier between two things, and it is a barrier between the here today and the hereafter, which is yeah. uh, from the time of death. And then he's continue saying, Barzakh or Barazikh is qita'atu ardayqa mahsura bayna bahrain. It is a partition of land between two seas, which is connection between the two land. All right, this is what Barzakh. And then Hajj is Bainu Shayain. And he say, he quote here for us Marjul Bahrain Layal Taqiyan Bainahu Barzakh Layab Quyan. Quote exactly the verse for us from Quran and he says, Qitatu Ardin Mahsura Baina Bahrain, a piece of land which is between two seas and connect the two seas together. Or sorry, connect between two two lands. And the, the last meaning that Barzakh is between the, the hereafter. The the the, the 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 land of the life of today and the hereafter. That's it. This is the Arabic translation, as you see. I can send the link. You want a link? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Missing the link. You can check it out by yourself later. So you see, we are not making things up. So as you see, Ibn Kathir, we can go to, uh, forget about Ibn Kathir, let's go to a different one if you want. You know, we yeah, can yeah. go, we can go, uh, uh, we can go instead of uh, going to one interpretation. Maybe this guy is wrong and you never know, right? Okay, let's go yeah, and see. Chapter, chapter hold on, chapter 25, verse number 53. Let's give it all the options, all right? Let us, uh, let us see. Chapter 25, verse number 53, interpretation. My question is this does the word barzakh only mean land or can it yes, also land, mean yeah barzakh yeah. barzakh mean land barzakh mean land yeah. only that yes absolutely i showed you the dictionary i'm not making things up my friend all right it's a it's a land who connected between two let us say usually usually it's like a, if you have let me draw for you something in front of you if we have here i'm not good in drawing but just to show you let us say from this side, let me change the color. I will make it a blue. So we have here a C. Yeah. And here we have a C. But between them, we have a land. And I will make the land in brown. This place here, we call it Barzakh. So there is two lands here, big lands, all right? Yeah. And there is a land from this direction. This area here, we call it Barzakh. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. And obviously, this is a this is a false explanation from the Quran. So the Quran trying to, uh, to uh, tell, tell us how Allah He preserved between the fresh water and the salty water. How He made a barrier between them. But this is absolutely false. The fresh water itself is the same as the salty water, and the salty water itself is the same as the fresh water. The only difference is that the salty water, by the heat of the sun, vibrate, became a steam, then became a cloud, and then the cloud move. And then the cloud drop water. Let me show you another mistake in the Quran. As long as we are talking about cloud and rain, etc. Where Allah He got His hail from? Do you know, my friend? You know what hail, right? Yeah. Okay. What is hail? What is hail according to your understanding? Is rain? Uh, is it it's frozen? Cloud. It's a frozen water, right? It's an ice. Yeah. We call it hail. Yeah. All right. Uh, how Allah He how Allah He sent hail? Do you know? Um. I read a verse in the Quran. Uh, Muslim says this is about the uh, water cycle. Mm -hmm. But look, look what the Quran saying. The Quran saying the opposite. They lie to you, my friend. They, they are professional liars. It says here that Allah He sent hail from mountains, which is in heaven. So what the what the yeah. Quran saying that Allah He break pieces of hail from an ice or mountain of ice, and He submitted on us. The verse in the front of you, we can go to any interpretation you want. Which one you like? Um, yeah, you can uh, just pick. How in the world God he will say such a thing? That in the in the heaven yeah. there's mountain of hail, and this is where Allah he got the hail from. Is that scientifically true? Um is it uh, that Allah calls the mountains uh, in the heaven just a metaphor? No, no, he's here. He's not. That's not metaphor. This is speaking about, and you, know, you see, the funny is that the Muslims, uh, uh, they, they, when we quote for them, there's something they say that that's you know maybe metaphorical. But if you read the verse with me, speaking about things that are not metaphorical, that how Allah He switched the day and the night, and then He created for you from every creature from from water. Some of them they walk uh, in their belly. And some of them they walk in two legs, and some of them they walk in four, which is absolutely false. Because there is many creatures who have many legs. Correct. So based on this verse, you see this is cannot be metaphorical, right? You describe even how many legs. So yeah, uh, uh, and 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 even the Muslim scholars they never understood it as a metaphorical, and even the Muslims today they try to make this as a miracle. They they try, here they come they say. Look, Allah, He speak how the cloud gathered together and how they became liars and how they send rain. But a, a verse before, we just showed that the, the Quran think that Allah, He separate between the salty water and the fresh water. 
and here he's saying that Allah he sent down from mountains in heaven uh, uh, hail you know and this is absolutely false if we go right now and we check the interpretation in chapter 24 verse number 43 43 24 here we go We do be careful, my friend. And by the way, uh, uh is a new scholar. <laughs> this is this is a guy who learned science now and etc. So you see, uh, they try to cover up the the the, the, the madness of the Quran. Uh, uh, do you see how the rain is issuing from the midst of of uh, specific outlets in them? And then he sent down from the heaven out of mountains. Do you see it? Yeah, but men jibali uh... fiha extract their end from heaven. So there's mountains of hail in the heaven, and Allah He extract the hail from it. So the mountains of hell is a literal thing. It is, as you see, speaking about rain. Is rain is literal? Yes. Is hail is literal? Yes. Did he submit yeah, it? Did he submit it to us? Us, yes, you know. And not only that, he hit with it whoever he wish. He hit with it. He hit with it. So the Quran saying that Allah He punish us by hail. Let us go to uh, Tafsir Ibn Abbas. You're, you're a prophet, cousin. Okay. Have you not seen the uh, uh, been informed on Muhammad the Quran about how Allah uh, uh, drive about the cloud? And being uh, bring the cloud together and make them liar liars and those set rain come forth from between them and from between the cloud he sent down from heaven uh, uh, from the heaven mountains where is hail he said send down hail from mountains in heaven yeah. and submit them with hail or a heap to who he want to punish you see it yeah okay not only that if we go to the Quran chapter 13 verse number 13 do you know that the Quran claimed that the thunder is an angel yeah but you know when Allah says these things I just think by myself that only Allah has the ability to understand that because my friend my Allah friend so it, let, let me tell you how funny what you just said Suddenly, only Allah can understand, but the Muslims, they are explaining the Quran for the last 14 centuries. For what then? If Allah only can understand. And yeah. it's, I mean, it's so clear. What the point of sending me a book nobody understand except him? There's no point. This is, with my respect to you, this will be stupid. Because if you yeah. send me a book, I will not understand anyway. So why you are telling me those things? Yeah, I agree. But in the Quran, it also says that Allah, that the sun sets in a muddy spring, but in the other verse it said that the sun is in orbit night and day long no my but, friend no no my friend let me show you we will go there after we finish this one do you see here that the thunder is an angel yeah the thunder the thunder in islam is an angel who prays allah and also the angels you see uh the thunder uh he prays uh, i can take this as a metaphorical but the muslims they don't as you see because the verse itself says, it says that aradu you uh you uh you by his command, it is an angel. So what is the thunder? It's an angel, right? Yeah. Now, if we go, you, you mentioned to me what about what about uh, remind me just a second ago about yeah about the sun setting and the muddy spring. But okay, it, I, let, let me show you. Yeah, let, right. let me ask you, who can understand the Quran better than your prophet? Nobody, right? Yeah. Okay. If your prophet he explained it to us, then we cannot say he he is wrong. Yeah. I think you but agree with it, me. I'm okay. Kind of Read with me. Also says my friend read with me here we go this is sahih chain hadith yeah. this is your prophet this is sahih this is sahih chain do you see it al alabani yeah, yeah. okay so we can say it's weak daif and those crazy stuff i was sitting behind allah messenger who was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting he asked about uh, uh, do you know where this set which means the sun i replied Allah and his, his apostle, they know best. He said it's set in a spring of warm water, Hamia. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. So the Quran said that Muhammad explained that. So what we will what we do now? Is that metaphorical? No. Uh, 
Ahmed also said that it sets under underneath Allah's throne. Yeah, but uh, really, uh, okay, hold on. This is another uh, this is another stupid thing because look what he said. Because Muhammad he claimed that the sun every day, and he explained that this is not metaphorical. He asked the same guy the same story. He said to him, Do you know where the sun goes? Do you know where the sun goes? Hmm? Let us see the hadith. And even he quoted the verse for him from the Quran. So we cannot say he was not quoting the verse. So here we go. This is Sahir Bukhari, which is very accurate hadith. It says, Once I was with the Prophet of Allah. Do you see the screen, my friend? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Once I was with the Prophet of Allah and uh, in the mosque at the time of the sunset and i uh, he said to me uh, oh abu dar which means your prophet saying to this guy do you know where the sun where do you know where the sun set where the sun set do you see it says where yeah okay when i say where it's mean a location correct yeah okay now where the sun set so he is talking about the sunset a physical thing not metaphorical i replied allah and his apostle knows best he said it goes who is the one is going allah uh, uh, the sun sorry and prostrate underneath allah throne so muhammad explaining at the time of the sunset where the sun is going correct yeah so this is physically explanation for a physical movement he is trying to explain to us where the sun is going why the sun is going the sun it goes every day to prostrate under the throne of Allah, and then he says, and that is Allah's statement. He explained now to Quran for us, so no, no way a Muslim he can say Muhammad was not right. He quote for us from the Quran, chapter thirty-six, verse number thirty-eight says, and the sun runs on its fixed course for a term and a degree. So Muhammad is saying the Quran when he speak about this verse, explaining to us how the sun run in the orbit. You mentioned to me this is the orbit. Every day the sun goes from the east. And go all the way at the end of the day under the throne of Allah. Sleep under the throne of Allah in the murky water. Isn't it the Quran says, isn't it the hadith says that uh, uh, the throne of Allah is above the water? Um, yes. Let us, let us find the hadith. Here we go. Allah throne is above the water. You see it, yeah. and that explain what Muhammad is talking about. So Allah throne is above the water. The sun goes all the way, prostrate itself, and the throne of Allah, which where above the water. And what is that water? Is Ainun Hamia. Did we make it clear for you, my friend? Yeah. How this can be Quran? How this can be from God? Oh. In the Quran, it says that it stays in the orbit night and day long. Sorry, in the uh, in the Quran, it says that it stays in an orbit night and day long. What night day long? And, and it, but the sun is in its orbit every. My friend, is it is it here? You go, your prophet. He just explained where the sun goes. Come on, you know we don't want to play games. I'm saying there it says there there it says there it says clearly. And Muhammad is the one who quote the verse for you. Muhammad he quote for you. What it's mean that the sun run in its course, so I cannot explain it better than your prophet, and you cannot explain it more than your prophet. So when he say the sun set in the murky water, that's mean it's a murky water. He explained and he quote for us chapter thirty six. It says, and this is what it's meant that the sun run in its or course. So the sun every day move from point A to point B. We have to be honest. Yeah, in the Quran it also says that the uh, that the moon follows the sun. Where, where in the Quran says the moon follows the sun? Uh, let me let me show you. Let me show you what the Quran is saying. I know what you are talking about. This is this is a mistake. You are you you are forcing me to bring all the mistakes of the Quran. I mean, you are helping me big deal. Okay. Yeah, but how isn't it really a mistake? Because like the moon doesn't follow the sun in its orbit, but it follows the sun in its. Uh, no, my path. my friend, my friend doesn't say that. Let me show you what the Quran but is saying. If the Quran, if the Quran says that the uh, sun follows moon, then it would have been a mistake. Well, I don't know what you mean. Uh, the Quran says that the uh, moon follows the sun, right? The moon follows the sun. Yeah. Okay, where it says the moon and follow the sun. Uh, check the. Uh, 
Okay, verse number two. Okay. Well, Qamar, Izat is not following. It's the, the, when the moon came after. It's not follow really. It's coming. Well, Qamar, Izat Follow here is about following by time, not about uh, 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 you know following the sun. Uh, let me let me you see. It says when first the night, then new moon to be seen. Now let me show you that this is what it's meant. Because if you go in the Quran, my friend. Okay, let us close some pages. Too many pages open that will slow our internet. Okay. Uh, chapter thirty one. Verse number 29, chapter 35, verse number 13, uh, chapter 36, verse number 40, chapter 39, verse number 5. Uh, uh, chapter 41, verse number 37, uh, chapter, I mean, all those chapters are a pure mistake. And let us start one by one. Let us see. Let us go from the one speaking about the movement. Okay. Where we are, where are it's okay. Okay, here we go. Chapter twenty one, verse number thirty three. Read with me carefully, my friend. It is he who created the night and the day, and the sun and the moon. They float each in an orbit. Do you know what each goes for when he say each? Each what? Uh, they both. Each what? Like, they, uh, each means sun and the other one means uh, no, moon. No, each is goes for all. You see, in Arabic it says, Kullun. The, the, the old legions believe that those are uh, the stars they have uh, ship this is why you saw if you go to the zodiac you will see that uh, uh, they have a ship you know I don't know if you saw it before they believe that those stars they float in a ship so look what it says that all of them they float they swim actually yes which means they swim in uh, 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 in in a, in a, the uh, falcon here is not really orbit as much as a ship, but we will go with the Muslim translation just to make you happy. So each they float, each what, each the day and the night. It is he who created what the night and the day and the sun and the moon, and then they, which means all of them. Float each in an orbit. Do you see it? Yeah, okay. So the day and the night they have an orbit. Is that true? Mm. It actually says in another version of one that Allah makes the night overwrap the day and the day overwrap the night. Mm -hmm. But, but this so is can... okay. We will go there just one by one. Let us finish this one. Okay, so Allah created the night and the day. So what Allah is speaking about, that the night and the day is something physically created. I can accept that he created the, the, night, the night as a metaphorical meaning because, you know, the night is not really created. It's just darkness. But we will let it go as metaphorical. But created the day. Are we speaking about the day as something different from... From what we have, is it the same day he's talking about? Yes, he's talking about the same day, our day and our night. Okay. Yeah. So now he's saying that the night and the day and the sun and the moon, 
they each flow in the airport, but this is false. Don't we have something is called the eclipse? The Quran says in different verse that the moon and the sun they never met. Um, hmm? Where does it say that? Chapter oh, yeah. chapter yeah, thirty six, yeah. verse number forty. Yeah. Okay. It is not for the sun to overtake the moon, nor doth the night overstrip the day. They float each in an air orbit, but this is false, because simply the sun is always actually there. It is just the earth going around itself. We are not overlapping the sun. The sun is there. It's just because we are the earth is is uh, is facing the other direction of the sun. Correct. Yeah. Same time when he say that the sun and the moon they never meet together. They will never overstrip. That is false because that's mean he don't understand the eclipse. Don't we have something? It's called the eclipse. Yeah. And then suddenly we have night overtaking the day. Yeah. So this is a mistake too. Mari ikut Yesus. Mari ke jalan yang benar. Tuhan berkati.